Spinal adjustments provided by Dr. Chad Rolfson. The Spinal Tuning Chiropractic Center is a Des Moines area low flat fee per month unlimited chiropractic care practice. When life happens, just adjust. Schedule today at SpinalTuning.com. Welcome to the Gospel Road. We're going to get right into it today. Colossians 1 is what we are looking at. It says, Paul, an apostle of Christ, by the will of God, and Timothy, our brother, to the saints and faithful brothers in Christ at Colossae. Grace to you and peace from God our Father. We always thank God, the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, when we pray for you. Since we heard of your faith in Christ Jesus and of the love that you have for all the saints, because of the hope laid upon you in heaven. Of this you have heard before in the word of truth, the gospel, which has come to you. As indeed in the whole world it is bearing fruit and increasing, as it also does among you, since the day you heard it and understood the grace of God in truth. Just as you learned it from Ephyrus, our beloved fellow servant, he is a faithful minister of Christ on your behalf and has made known to us your love in the Spirit. And so, from that the day we heard, we have not ceased praying for you, asking that you may be filled with the knowledge of his will in all spiritual wisdom and understanding, so as to walk in a manner worthy of the Lord, fully pleasing to him, bearing fruit in every good work, and increasing in the knowledge of God, being strengthened with all power according to his glorious might, for an endurance and patience with joy, giving thanks to the Father who has qualified you to share in the inheritance of the saints in light. He has delivered us from the dominion of darkness and transferred us from the kingdom of his beloved Son, in whom we have redemption, the forgiveness of sins. He is the image of the invisible God, the firstborn of all creation. For by him all things were created, in earth and on heaven, visible and invisible, whether thrones or dominions or rulers or authorities. All things were created through him and for him. And he is before all things, and in him all things hold together. And he is the head of the body, the church. He is the beginning, the firstborn from the dead. That is, that in everything he might be preeminent. For in him all the fullness of God was pleased to dwell, and through him to reconcile to himself all things, whether on earth or in heaven, making peace by the blood of his cross. And you who once were alienated and hostile in mind, doing evil deeds, he has now reconciled in his body of flesh by his death in order to present you holy and blameless and above reproach before him. If indeed you continue in the faith, stable and steadfast, not shifting from the hope of the gospel that you heard, which was which has been proclaimed in all creation under heaven and of which I, Paul, became a minister. Now I rejoice in my sufferings for your sake, and in my flesh I am filling up what is lacking in Christ's affections, afflictions for the sake of his body, that is, the church, of which I become a minister according to the stewardship from God that was given to me for you to make the word of God fully known, the mystery hidden for ages and generations, but now revealed to his saints. To them, God chose to make known how great among the Gentiles are the riches of the glory of this ministry, which is Christ in you, the hope of glory. Him we proclaim, warning everyone and teaching everyone with all wisdom that we may present everyone mature in Christ. For this I toil, struggling with all his energy, that he prayerfully works within me. Colossians chapter 1. 
That's what we're looking at today. Giving thanksgiving, being thankful, praying, praying for others. Again, a little more spiritual on this one today of, you know, God, Jesus being rose from the dead, forgiving our sins, giving us that redemption, giving us that hope, the grace, the mercy. It doesn't matter what we've done in our past. When we relinquish it, we let it go. We give it to God. We ask for forgiveness. He forgives. He does not hold that against us. See, this is the part that I look of how we can use this to help us be better. Because again, it's a human trait that we hold things against others. I know so many people that I have conversations with on a daily basis to where they're talking about who has done them wrong and they hold grudges. And we've talked about, we've heard about, in many ways, especially in the self-help books and when we hear people talking, therapists and psychologists on TV and radio, how we need to let those things go because by holding on to that resentment, holding on to what people have done to us, it hurts us more than it hurts them. Because number one, they're not even thinking about it. But you're holding that grudge. That grudge can work as a cancer and just grow in you and then just make you bitter and hostile. The goal is to let go of these things to be that better person, to help others to be better, to let go of things that have happened so you can move forward. And we've all heard the story about working with somebody that had done something wrong, wronged them in some way. They've been working with them for 10 years. They still remember what they did 10 years ago, and they still hold it against them. Which then makes it a little odd, shaky, when you have to put them together. I'm going to be the first to admit I've failed at this myself. Things have happened to me and then it just kind of just digs into me and I had to let it go. And I believe I've ruined friendships because, and it's something they didn't even do to me. But I was just angry and frustrated. And the biggest issue was probably me anyway. Or the reason why what happened was out of anyone's control because it came down from on high, for lack of a better way of saying it. You know, I've talked to so many people and I've, I've even fell into this myself where you lose a job and you just hold a grudge about that. And then as I look back and I think about it, it was probably maybe a good thing that I did because maybe I was just focusing too much on that. And it was hurting me because that really became my life. Not looking at other things. I mean, I I was still living outside of it, but I was just submersed. And it's bad enough being in a occupation that really... Your it is your life. You are dealing with something every day, all the time. I was having a conversation with somebody the other day, and we're talking about you know getting the calls of all hours of the night when a station goes off the air. They go, "You're almost like a doctor." Well, I just don't get that kind of money. <laughs> But yeah, in some ways it is. 
Because you have to be available when something breaks to try and fix it. To the best of your ability. And when you are in smaller companies, smaller stations, less people to reach out to, it's more responsibility on the shoulders of those that work there. Now, we have seen these in small companies that you, again, have all these people that work, but even in the bigger companies, you only have maybe 20% of them that are actually doing most of the work, which is not good. So that means like a business of 10 people, that means two people are doing most of the work. What are the other eight doing? Or they don't want to be bothered. It's not their thing. It's not your thing. Then why are you here? Why are you doing this? It's figuring out how we can let that go. Not hold those grudges. Because again, by holding them, all that does is it rips me apart inside then causes me to really be bitter towards that person whenever they do anything, even if they do something right. I, I, I'm i blind to that. It's that forgiveness. It's working on that peace with each other, the harmony Sharing knowledge, gaining wisdom, understanding. We're all trying to be better people. At least I hope we are. I am. I hope you are. Being thankful every day. Praying every day. Sharing God's unconditional love every day. His mercy. His grace. Again, no one ever said it was going to be easy. Nobody ever said it was going to be simple. Because we have our own issues to our own obstacles. I am my biggest obstacle. You know, a lot of times we hear, we are our own worst critic, which is true. But we are also our biggest obstacle. I get in my way more than others get in my way. Read Colossians 1. Be better tomorrow than you were today. And I hope you were better today than you were yesterday. Love God, love your neighbor, love yourself. Be that better person. Share that forgiveness. Thank you for listening to The Gospel Road. Share this with others that you know. Let them know about The Gospel Road. Maybe they'd like to listen as well. You can also subscribe to either the podcast through Apple Podcasts, Google Play, You can uh, check it out on the iHeart app. You can even uh, follow me on social media, both Facebook and Twitter at MyBuddyJimmy, and even on YouTube at MyBuddyJimmy101. Thank you for listening. Have a great day. God bless.